It's been through an awful day, Matt. Yeah, absolutely, Gerald. Uh, this is, uh, we can see out here, things are kind of getting back to normal as this. Lockdown has now been lifted here. Uh, students are walking home, heading back from where they've been been in their lockdown here. But I want to bring in uh, Aiden Scott. You are a grad student here at UNC. Yep. You say you actually know this suspect that has been taken into custody here. Yeah, I had a class with uh, him two semesters ago. It was my first uh, semester as a grad student here. I was an undergrad here before that, but it was my first grad student uh, semester, my first grad school class. It was a uh, machine learning class, uh, Comp uh, 755, and we all had a project where we had to do research together, and he was in our group as one of the members. What are, are what's your memories of him? What was he like as a student here? Uh, so it's kind of hard for me to cope with all of this because I would have never guessed that he would be the kind of person who could possibly be capable of this kind of thing. Why is that? Uh, when I was in meetings with him, he was always very quiet, uh, English second language clearly, uh, because I think he was from China or some somewhere. and. Every single time that he talked to me, he seemed very nice. Like one time for the first homework assignment, he was asking me questions about uh, like how to do the problems. And I never got any sort of sort of red flag that he could possibly even think to do this kind of thing. Like when I saw his face on the reports online, I was just like, beyond shocked that I knew him. He has been arrested. We have just learned in the last 10 minutes or so that one person was killed um, not a student here, believed to be someone that's a faculty member, staff member here. What do you think when you hear that, that this person you knew may be responsible for this? I mean, it's just absolutely chilling. Like, for, you don't even ever think that you would be the kind of person to be in this scenario to where there could be a shooter around you, let alone be directly connected in some way to the person to where if he had stayed in our project group a little bit longer, there's a good chance I could have taken him out to dinner and spent time with him and been a friend of some kind with him. It's just, it's shocking to imagine that every everyday people that you meet on the street could be capable of such a horrible thing. How are you holding up just, <laughs> you were in lockdown just like everyone else here. Yeah, um, for the first hour or so, I was kind of in denial as to what was even happening, I think. I was like cracking jokes with my friends. I was like, I, I don't know. I was saying some things that may have been in bad taste just because I don't think I had really processed what was even happening here. Um, but as, as the time went on and as more reports started coming in and it was like, oh, you're not actually that far away from where the shooting's taking place. And oh, I'm in group chats with people who are in the building where it happened from uh, my club because I'm an officer in one of the clubs here. And it's just, it became increasingly more and more real. And that's when the anxiety set in. Do you know if he was still a student here, what he was studying? Um, I assume that he's still here. Um, most people who take the machine learning class here are computer science, computer science grad students. I don't know if that's the case for sure, but that would be my best guess because you usually don't get that many out of major people taking that class. Gotcha. Aiden, hold on right here. Uh, Lena, I know yeah. you have a question I'd like to ask him I, as well since uh, as we hear this, someone who knew this person. Unbelievable. So Matt, you know, when you're in groups uh, and group projects with people, you kind of get a sense of maybe their ability to socialize. Did he get a sense? That, that he had friends on campus or, or was he kind of a loner? Anything he can describe as far as that? Yeah, yeah a great question. Lena wants to know, uh, uh, you were in a group with him, so you spend time with him. Yeah. How social was he? Did you get a sense he had friends, that he had a good network here? Uh, in hindsight, I would guess that he probably didn't have a very strong network here because I get the impression that he went to uh, some other university from out of the country, so he was probably very new and very out of his element here and he was also very quiet so I could easily see a situation where he didn't have that many people close to him but I don't know that for sure. Gotcha. Aiden thank you for taking the time and talking with us here uh, but again you, you just heard someone who w was in a project group with this grad student uh, here at as we try to learn more about the suspect now believed to have killed one person here uh, on UNC campus. Matt, you were watching live a couple of hours ago as students were being led out of buildings with their hands up, a, a eerie, frightening scene that we've become all too familiar with here in the United States. Uh, now students are no longer doing it, but, but just kind of describe the, the, the faces of, of the students there. 
Yeah, I mean, if we can walk around here, Aiden, hold on one second with it, we'll be right back to talk with you again. But if you see around here, the student store is right over there. So there's a lot of people. This is an area that everyone knows on UNC's campus here in Chapel Hill. And you see everyone walking around on their phones. They're getting updates. They're letting their family members, their friends know what's going on and probably trying to reconnect with friends on campus here. Because what we saw in those immediate uh, moments after people were being let out by police from these immediate buildings, these labs, the library here, we saw them with their hands up and police leading them out of the way. They were obviously very frightened because they're in the heart of all this police activity here. Now everyone else is there let out of these uh, rooms, these classrooms where they were in lockdown. You can tell that people are just, I think, relieved uh, that this is over with here um, and trying to reconnect with their friends and family because they didn't know where to go. Those first groups that we talked to, uh, they were just let out in other rooms, other buildings were still in lockdown and they were trying to figure out where do I go? What do I do? Is it safe? But at this point, everything, the university giving the all clear here. So uh, you see a lot of people on their phones reconnect uh, with their friends and family here. Matt Tallhelm reporting live for us. Uh, photojournalist Ed Wilson painting the picture of, of the, the kind of dichotomy of seeing all those students flooding out, but also seeing the police tape around one portion uh, of the campus. I mean, that has to be uh, jarring, certainly for the students. I mean, visually, it tells a story. I mean, where they are, where the students are. We saw the video of students, students being ushered out of the buildings there. And again, just for those of you who are joining us, this all kicked off around one o'clock this afternoon after that alert, Carolina alert went out. And here we are three and a half hours later, and we're hoping to get some kind of update in just a little bit. That's where we go to WREL's Shelly Jackson. She she is at the Carolina Inn right now for a press conference that we're being told is going to happen there. So, Shelly, tell me a little bit about what uh, you're hearing so far since you've arrived there. Well, Chris, we are waiting for this press conference to begin out here at the Carolina Inn. Right now, they're just setting up and getting ready, testing the equipment. Um, if you are just joining us, though, we have confirmed that one person has died, and that person is believed to be a faculty member. So there are a lot of questions right now for these university prof um, officials. We want to know what led up to the f um, shooting. Did Chi, the suspect, know the, the faculty member? Just a lot of questions right now that we are hoping to answer when this press conference begins. Chris? All right, thank you, Shelley. And of course, one of the biggest things we're trying to get right now, Lena, is who exactly is Ty Lei Chi about this? We're, we're trying to get more details about right. who exactly they are. We do know that WREL's Sarah Kruger is looking into that right now. But before we get her into our newscast, just looking up online based off of UNC's website, we mm -hmm. do see on their Applied Physical Sciences Department, I mean, simply by going there, you can see his picture is there. Mm -hmm. And it lists just a, a, a bit of information there saying that he entered in 2022, Ty Lei Chi entered the university then. And we know that uh, at some point they attended Louisiana State University of Material Science and Wuhan University and the Department of Physics, Wuhan, of course, in China. Hmm. So we're trying to get more specific details with that. Again, right. WRO Sarah Kruger is, is getting more, digging more into that. And we'll hopefully have a complete story to kind of tell us a little bit about who this person is. Yeah. But we did hear from the person Matt interviewed that they had known him. They at least mm -hmm. had a project that they had with Tai Lei Chi, what, two years ago-ish? And, you know, it was a little bit surprised to see that this is the person that investigators are looking for, but hopefully we get some sort of semblance of an answer from investigators as um, we just saw Shelly Jackson waiting there at the Carolina Inn for a press conference as we continue to have our coverage here on WRL. Yeah, the question this afternoon is, is why? What's the why? motive behind this? Um, and we have crews also 